I cook American food. I live my life constantly bouncing between Hong Kong and North America and suffer the typical identity crisis that you have when you live between two cultures, trying to acclimate to the one that you're in but always having space taken up by the knowledge of the other. It was through food and cooking that as I got older, I decided to relearn Chinese culture. I can't read Chinese, I can barely speak it, but I grew up on the food. And I knew what good Chinese food tasted like, and that in Detroit where I lived, we had a lack of it. So I cooked and studied and researched, looking over its history, staging, that's chef speak for interning, at a noodle restaurant in Macau, really trying to understand what it meant to cook different styles of Chinese food. What I discovered was that without everyday exposure and opportunities to see the source, I would probably never get to the point of the masters I was learning from. I knew a lot. I impressed my teachers, but I was only in one place for a short time, and there was just too much to learn. As I got better at cooking, I realized I was putting myself in a different kind of identity crisis, who I was as a cook. I realized something. I'll never cook as well as they do back there, but at the same time, there are things I know about my own home that they will never know either. I worked for and with other chefs. Our community here is close. Most of us are all friends with each other, and we've all had different experiences. With different people who came from all over the country and world, I made anya lodi, sushi rice, fries, fried chicken, biscuits, igusi, jollof rice. I learned about the science of cooking and how to do things like cook things in a vacuum and to make ice cream with liquid nitrogen. And I learned these things from fellow Americans and Americans-to-be. And one day when I saw pork belly, roasted and drizzled in balsamic at a fancy American restaurant in Austin, I realized what American food was becoming. More like mine and more like the food of the people who taught me. More like the food of the people I was cooking with. I hate the word authentic. I can make a whole video on how much I hate that word because it fetishizes ethnic food and forces us to be put in a category that doesn't allow us to grow. In a way, it also others us, as if we're not all right here, right now, together, in the same country, in the same place. There's nothing wrong with seeking out the best traditional cuisine you can find. But as long as you're doing what you do honestly, you're being authentic. I mean, come on, apple pie came from England, and it became an American symbol through World War era marketing. Southern fried chicken is Scottish and West African. Hamburgers were known as hamburger sandwiches, and sandwiches are the product of John Montague, the Earl of Sandwich. I'm not actually kidding. This happened because of a gambling problem. This is history, you guys. So that got me thinking. Why are these foods considered American? And why were the American restaurants serving more ethnic and exotic ingredients all coming out of kitchens run by white guys? There's nothing wrong with them doing it, but God damn it, I want to play too. And so I did. Using my base knowledge of Chinese cuisine, I started to wonder what it actually meant to be Chinese American. That genre of food exists, but it's not respected. And that food was born out of survival, not mastery. No Chinese master chef came to America to cook banquet meals. We were just trying to fit in and be accepted as best we knew how. So that was the mission for me, not to cook any type of fusion cuisine, but with the mindset of third culture. Someone who's had enough experience living in two places that they belong to both and neither at the same time. I wanted to make food that tasted like home, but different. I wanted to make food that tasted like home to two families who spoke different languages. This idea came to me when I was learning about Afrofuturism from one of my friends and the rightful insertion of black people into genres of fantasy and science fiction. Black people and black culture will exist in the future and the far future should reflect that, so I wondered why traditional American cuisine was so void of ethnic culture. What would have happened if not only Cantonese people came to America? What would the food be like in Atlanta if the Hunanese brought their salted chilies and intense love for heat with them? What would food be like at the home of kids who grew up with Sichuan and Mexican parents? When I had these ideas, Kamala wasn't even considering being vice president yet. In fact, these ideas are probably close to five or six years old. But after I found out who her parents were, I knew these ideas weren't crazy. I mean, come on, she's Indian and Jamaican. Can you imagine the spices at her house? Can you imagine Thanksgiving with both sets of aunties? And that's the food I'm trying to make now. That's the food that excites me. As you get to know me, you'll start seeing that this is where my journey has brought me so far. I've got a long way to go and I can't be more excited about that. I believe that there's no best way to be American. There are so many kinds of Americans and therefore there are many ways to be American. This country as a table is huge. 
and we all have something to bring to it. So I guess that still begs the question, what kind of food do I cook? I cook American food. Paqueri pasta with poached shrimp, confit tomatoes, and duo jiao, seasoned with hong yao.